church say amen? Amen. amen. Can I get everybody to stand, please, if you will, for the prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, this once and again we call upon your name. Yes, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you because you've been mighty good to us. Hallelujah. Uh, you've been better to us than we ever know how to be to our sin. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You took us over dangerous highways and byways, and, yes, and you Lord. kept us, Lord. Thank Lord. you, Lord. And allowed us to see a day that was not promised. Amen. For that, Lord, that's enough to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Lord, you touched us with the finger of love. And yes. You just filled us up with your love, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Well, I had a talk with a friend of mine, and, <clears throat> and I asked him a question. Mm. I said, Jimmy, are you ready to die? Yes. He said, no. I said, hey, bro, we need to live like we're ready to go home. Yes. For our loved ones, and do, do you feel like you have to, I'm going to have to say, I love you one more time. Yes. I said, if we live right, then they'll know, you will know, our heart in the right place. We give God some of our time. And I want the church to know that <clears throat> Jimmy started reading his Bible. Amen. All thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jimmy started reading his Bible. Yes. And he's giving God the praise today. Amen. And I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You've been mighty good to us. Yeah. Down through the years. Yeah. Lord, we want you to bless Baptist Union. Bless yeah. the Lord. Bless all the people, all the families. Yeah. Lord, we have lost loved ones, and, <clears throat> and some may have gotten sick over one thing or another, but Lord, we're still here. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. And Lord, we're going to be victorious. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. you still God, and you sit so high. thousand tons, I couldn't say it enough. Yes, Lord. But we thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Be with us, stand by us, and God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
as well as for being uh, there uh, in your giving. Uh, we just thankful. Amen. Amen. We want to say thank you to the media crew. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Taking time out of your schedules uh, to help us continue to bring forth the word uh, for this congregation. Amen. Um, and by the way, happy Mother's Day. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Uh, when, when we're looking at this, amen, uh, we just uh, we salute you, mothers. Thank you for changing all our dirty diapers. Thank you for, for nurturing us up. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for making us feel like we're the most special creatures in the earth. Mm -hmm. You do that with your love. That's what you have done for us. Thank you for telling us something good about our fathers. Even right. when uh, you may have been in disagreement, but you told us something good, you continue uh, uh, to say something good and point us toward our fathers as a good head over the household. Amen. We thank you for that. Amen. We give you glory for that. And most of all, we thank you for sharing your faith. That's right. We thank you for praying for us. Amen. When nobody else uh, knew what was going on, many a time mothers did and mothers were praying. Uh, we thank you. Amen. Thank you. Um, brothers and sisters, we're blessed on today. Yes, we are. Amen. We have a special treat. Amen. Every once in a while, uh, the Lord uh, blesses us in a certain way, and on today is one of those days. Uh, on today, amen, we're going to hear a word of the Lord God Almighty as it comes through Minister St. Just. Amen. 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 We know him. He can preach. He will preach. He's certainly anointed, That's amen, right. to do so. And But I thank God uh, that the Lord has given him a heart for the Lord and for his people. Amen. 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 So Amen. at this time, let us welcome him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We bless you today. Amen. Hallelujah. God is exalted. The devil is defeated. And we have the victory. Wherever you are, can you share this word? God is exalted. The devil is defeated. And we have the victory. Hallelujah. God is exalted. Amen. The devil is defeated. And we have the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God this morning for his grace and his mercy. Uh, just like Pastor was saying, just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, uh, to my mother, to my mother in law, to my wife that is here with me this morning. Uh, happy Mother's Day to you guys. Um, I am honored to be in the house one more time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I am so, I'm so happy about that. Amen. Uh, I thank God for the opportunity to bring another word to his people. I thank my pastor, uh, his family, first lady, and then all the children. I thank you for giving me another opportunity in this house. Amen. To preach. Um, I just have to be honest. You're probably waiting for a, a Mother's Day message. But the Lord didn't put a Mother's Day message in my spirit. Um, I've been working on this. He's been giving me this for the past two months. And I preached a little bit of it one time before. But he had me go back. And he had me relook. And I'm just bringing this word to you. Like the Bible said, let those that have ears hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying at this hour. Amen. Um, and before I go also, I just want to um, bless uh, sense and prayers and, and um, to the family of the, the young men in Georgia, hallelujah, um, that was killed. Uh, we're going to just let God have his way. But you got to understand, the enemy is getting loose. And the only way we're going to fight the enemy, you got to go in the spirit realm to fight with the devil. And, and that's kind of like what I want, the word I want to bring to you today. Hallelujah. Uh, if you have your Bible, go with me to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. We're going to read verse 1. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. 
And it says, after this. I'm reading from the New, uh, New English, English Standard Version. Chapter 4, it says, after this. Just lay your hands on yourself, wherever you're at right now, and say, self, yeah. after this, after it's time to go up. After this, it's time to go up. Father God, let me deliver this message as you have given it to me with no fear and no hesitation. The flower fades, the grass withered, but the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord, will stand forever. And the name of Jesus. So Revelation 4 said, after this, I look and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I had heard speak to me like a trumpet saying, come up here, come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Verse 2 said, at once I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. This right here is the apostle John receiving instructions from Jesus. And the book of Revelation is revealing to us things that's going to take place in the end times. But a lot of those things, in order for you to see these things, you got to come up. You got to go to a higher level. You got to come up in the spirit realm so you can see because the Bible said we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spirit, spiritual charities and, and heavenly places. So you got to come up. Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Come up here after the devil try to shut the church down. After you've been locked down for the past three months. Come up here, glory to God. You can't see everything from where you at. But you got to come up to where I'm at. Because more attacks is coming. More distractions is coming. So, so, so I just stopped by to tell you about this unit today. It's time to go up. Because you can only see where you at. The further you go up, the further you can see. Hallelujah. Amen. So you cannot stay in the same place and expect to see the same thing. So you got to come up. Hallelujah. Amen. In order for you to see the enemy's attack. Since of God, we are entering into a new spiritual warfare. And beloved, we should do like the apostle says, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Watch, stand in the faith, be brave, and be strong. Amen. The 400 years has come to an end. Hallelujah. Right. And God has begun to turn his face Amen. toward his people. Amen. And the enemy is trying as his best to hold on us in captivity. Amen. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, you need to take up your whole armor of God Amen. and stand against the devil. Amen. And when you've done all you can, stand Amen. against the devil. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. You need to realize you cannot stay in the same position you was at three months ago. Last year or last ten decades. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to come up you got to make yourself available, hallelujah, in order for God to use you. Amen. Help me, somebody. Amen. It will not be easy. Amen. But when God is the wind, hallelujah, be it your rain. When God is the wind, be it your rain. The prophet Isaiah said, it shall, hallelujah, renew your strength. But, but, but what I find out is this is, Whenever you are working for God, the enemy, I, I, I'm sorry, I'll say whenever 
You're not doing nothing for God. That's what I meant to say. Whenever you're not working or doing anything to glorify God, to lift his kingdom up, the enemy don't have time to fool with you. If your church had no power before the shutdown, hallelujah, it would not have the power after the church opens back up. But for those of us, hallelujah, who know that Jesus is the rock on which I stand, oh, get attacked the most, hallelujah. And we just feel because we walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, commune every other uh, Sunday or every other month with Jesus, we feel that the devil is not coming knocking on your door. But I'm telling you right now that the devil is knocking on your door. And when the devil comes knocking on your door, hallelujah, we're not supposed to be scared. We're not supposed to be afraid. Because the Bible said that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. So you got to have a sound mind and you got to have power to fight the devil. Hallelujah. You're going to be attacked, lied on, mistreated, talk about. And every now and then you might get killed for the faith. But you got to stand and stand for God. Hallelujah. So, so, so here in Revelation, the Bible gives us a clear example. Hallelujah. That you are going to be attacked. That that is not always going to be smooth sailing. Right. The more you work for Jesus, the more the enemy will come after you. But the words say, hallelujah, greater is he that is in me, hallelujah, than he that is in the world. So the enemy can come, but I'm ready, hallelujah. So, he, so, so, so here we, we find the apostle Paul, hallelujah, and the worst situation that he could ever be. I don't know about you. Have you ever found yourself in a worst situation? And you're asking yourself, how am I going to make it out of this? But it's the very same place, glory to God, that Jesus wanted to talk to uh, 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 Apostle John. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the worst situation of your life, huh? That's the same place today that God wants to talk to you. Just like so many of us, we find ourselves in the middle of a crisis today. Coronavirus is everywhere. Joy has been replaced with fear. The churches are shut down, like I said. Time when wearing a mask, hallelujah. You were considered a thug, especially for black folks, hallelujah. Now, Mass is the new fashion of the day. Hallelujah. Social distancing is now becoming a new high five. Hallelujah. But in the midst of COVID-19, glory to God, in the midst of social distances, hallelujah, in the midst of fear, is the very place God wants to talk to you mothers this morning. God wants to talk to you fathers this morning. God wants to talk to you the youth this morning. That very place in the midst of COVID-19, hallelujah. That's the place Jesus said, I want to talk to you. I want to show you some things that's going to have to take place. My God. And you, and you say, so you say, why, preacher? Why, why do God wants to talk to me in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of crisis? People are dying. Everything else is going on around. Because First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, but you are, hallelujah, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, hallelujah, a holy nation, the, his own special people, that you may proclaim praise of the name of our God, because he has called you out of darkness and to his marvelous light, hallelujah. You have been called out of darkness. Church, you have been called out of darkness, huh? and you're going to be the light for the next decade to come, hallelujah. You can't be in the same place you've been uh, last year, a uh, couple years ago, hallelujah. You're going to have to be the salt and the light, huh? so people can see, hallelujah, 
in the midst of COVID-19, the church stood and praised God. No scientist couldn't save us but the power of the Holy Ghost. Baptist unit in the midst of COVID-19. God is saying, it's time. It's time to come up. But, but you got to understand, Corona was necessary. You, you, you got to understand that the pain was necessary. Uh, and I know the, the mothers can relate to this. Huh? But when you carry your baby for nine months huh, and you give it birth, hallelujah, you, you, you went through some suffering, hallelujah. I, I've been there a couple times when my wife was giving birth, hallelujah, and, and I can see the pain that she went through. But, but, but after the pain, oh. yeah. and, and they bring that baby, oh, she forgot all the pain that she went through. And you can see the smile on her face. Huh? It was necessary. The pain was necessary. In order to push that baby out of the, the pain, the, the, the pain was necessary. Yeah. Here, 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 here again in, in Revelation, God is revealing to us what is about to, to, to take place. Hallelujah. And, and you got to know John was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and according to scriptures, I had wrote this down, John was one of the first four disciples Jesus called to follow him. That's in Matthew 4, 21 and 22. And he was part of Jesus' closest disciples. Amen. Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the Bible called John the one whom Jesus loved. Right. And, and many scholars say, well, because the reason why, because uh, John probably was the youngest. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, but, but there's something about being the youngest, hallelujah. Yeah. There, there, there's something about being the last child. I got a sister that is the last child, hallelujah. It, it's something Amen. about being the last child, the things they can get away with. The, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. I don't want to get nobody to get upset at me. But, but it's something about being the last child. Amen. But it's also something about being the first child, hallelujah. Amen. Nevertheless, the Bible says that John, who walked with Jesus, followed Jesus, ate with Jesus, he even laid on Jesus' chest, hallelujah. Now find himself deserted in an island called Patmos, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. John, who was with Jesus when Jesus raised the dead girl, and he did not allow nobody else to come in the room beside those three other apostles. Mm -hmm. That's in Mark 5 and 37. You can read it. Mm -hmm. John, who saw Jesus transfigured before his very own eyes, while Jesus speak to Moses and Elijah, that's in Matthew 17. John, who saw Jesus, hallelujah, the night he was betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus asked him to keep watching and pray. That the same John, who now find himself in the worst situation possible, hallelujah. That the, the same John, who ran past Peter, just to go see the tomb where Jesus was laid. That, that, that same John we're talking about, hallelujah, is it, that same John now find himself in the worst situation. Why? Because he was proclaiming Amen. the kingdom of God. And let me tell you this morning, my brothers and sisters, when you start proclaiming the word of God, hallelujah, you will find yourself in the worst situation that you could ever be in. But I'm here to tell you again, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. I'd rather be suffering for Jesus than allow the devil to take over me. Hallelujah. Just because you are saved huh, don't mean trouble will not come your way. Just because you walk with Jesus huh, don't mean the devil, the devil won't come knock on your door. Just because you dance and you shout, hallelujah, don't mean corona will not, not come knock on your door, hallelujah. But the prophetic words say, he who dwell, hallelujah, in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, hallelujah. Coronavirus can come, but I'm covered. Cancer can come, but I'm covered. 
covered. Hallelujah. Sickness can come, but I'm covered. My corona check ain't got here yet, but I'm covered. Hallelujah. Why? Because he said he will give his angel charge over me. Hallelujah. I have no fear because corona cannot touch me. Hallelujah. And if it does touch me, the word said he was wounded for my transgression. Bruised, hallelujah, for my integrity and the chastisement of my peace was upon his shoulder and by his stripes. Yes. Hey, my, my son of the year was talking about. I am here, hallelujah. I'm here. Yes. Come on, come on. Don't, don't matter. Come on. Yes. Touch my body. But I'm here. Yes. I'm already here. I've been here 2,000 years ago yes. on the cross. So I don't have to worry about it. Like the deacon said to me this morning, you got to be ready. Yes. You got to be ready for whatever's come. Yes. Let it come. You got to be ready. Even ready Thanks. to die. Right. Amen. If you feel about dying, Thanks. then you're not really serving God. Right. Because in Hebrews 11, it talks about the heart of faith. Thanks. That he did all this by faith. But if you go all the way down the chapter, it also said by faith. Thanks. Some of them got killed. Amen. Most of the apostles got killed. By faith. Amen. So faith is a two-edged sword. Yeah. But you gotta have faith. Yeah. So, so John is segregated, Amen. cut off, and, and sent to this island called Patmos. And, and you got to know when you read about the, the Patmos, it's, it's a rocky place. It's a mortal place. Ain't nothing good going on there. But God. Amen. But God. God, I'm reminded of this, which is my daughter's Nadia's birthday. And I remember it was about 13 years ago. She was just maybe some maybe one year or so, hallelujah. And she was complaining all week long to my wife saying, my tummy, my tummy, my tummy, my tummy. And my wife would take her to the hospital and they would say, man, there's nothing wrong. The enemy was plotting behind closed doors to take my child out, hallelujah. So one day she came to me and she said, Dad, 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 Mama, ta, ta. And I said, okay. And we went to the hospital, hallelujah. And when I got there, glory to God, the nurse said, we got to take your daughter to the Vanderbilt Hospital in Tennessee right now. Because if we don't take her right now, she might not make it, hallelujah. And I remember I went into a state of depression, hallelujah. And I had to call my wife to say, look, meet us and Vanderbilt Hospital. And, and I can't remember how she got there, but she got there. And when we got there, they, they were trying to find pause. They were trying to find everything with my baby, hallelujah. And they couldn't find it. And, and she began to swell up, and they had to, they had to do surgeries and, and all that stuff. But the prayer of the righteous. Woo! Hey, glory to God. The, the, the prayers of the righteous, hallelujah. The, the, the favorite prayer of the mothers, hallelujah. Mothers don't stop praying for your children. Fathers don't stop praying for your children because there's going to come a time, hallelujah, that you're going to have to stand in the gap for them because they might not, not understand what's going on. But God, you still got to praise them. And every now and then you have to tell the haters thank you. I'm not saying that I'm thank you because they're better than God. But every now and then you ought to tell your haters thank you. Every now and then you ought to tell the devil, you ought to get the devil to thumbs up. Because the very plan that was meant to destroy you, hallelujah. The very place that the devil sent you think he's going to kill you, hallelujah. But it's the same place, hallelujah. And it's the same situation. It's in the same thing, hallelujah. God said, I want to talk to you and show you mighty things that you're not seen of. Show you things that's about to take place, hallelujah. That same place. That same place. So if you find your face, if you find yourself in a deserted island right now, begin to praise God, hallelujah. Begin to give him glory, because it's in that same place. God is getting ready to bless you. It's the same place, hallelujah. God is getting ready to elevate you. It's in that same place, hallelujah. Shout the same place. Same place, hallelujah. 
The devil ain't got no power, hallelujah. Same place, same place, same place. Huh? Same place, huh? The devil can try to shut the church down, but it won't stop my praise, hallelujah. The devil can try to say, well, only 10 people, hallelujah, but he will not shut my praise, hallelujah. Because I can praise him in my bedroom. I can praise him in my garage. Huh? I can praise him in my living room. Huh? I can praise him in the bathroom. Huh? My water bill might go up, huh? but I don't care. Huh? I can praise him in the shower, hallelujah. I might not be able to sing, but the Bible said, make a joyful noise. Huh? He didn't say you got to be a perfect singer. He didn't say you got to know every lyrics. Huh? He just said, make a, a joyful noise, hallelujah. And I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise, huh? Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Huh? The book of Revelation, like I said, is showing us things. And right here in chapter 4, hallelujah. John said, after this. So, so to really understand what after this, we have to go back a couple chapters. So, so in, verse, in chapter 1, verse 10, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches. And, and I know this is probably a touch issue here, but, 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 but I come to realize that, that John, the one talking about Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. when it's in the Lord's day, that's just my take, Holy Ghost, help me out. That's just my take, you weren't talking about Saturday or Sunday or Monday, any day can be the Lord's day, hallelujah. But, but, but what I realized, what John is saying, while I was praising and worship, something got a hold of me, hallelujah. And, and, and that's why I love to praise and worship. That's why I love to praise and worship, because when you begin to praise and worship, hallelujah, something got a hold of you. Huh? The Holy Ghost will get a hold of you. And, and, and that's exactly what happened here. John began to praise and worship God. John began to call on the name of Jesus. Huh? And the Holy Ghost got a hold of him. Huh? And the Holy Ghost began to lift him up. Amen. John began to have an out-of-body experience. Huh? And then Jesus met him right then and there. Huh? And Jesus said, John, I got some news for you. Huh? I got some things to tell you to tell these churches. Huh? And you got to understand this morning, huh? when John is talking about the church, huh? when Jesus is talking about the church, huh? he's not specifically talking about a building. Hallelujah. The church is in you. Hallelujah. Each one of you today represent one of these churches. Hallelujah. Because the church is not just the building, huh? but the church starts with you. Hallelujah. Because when the Holy Ghost fell, huh? he didn't fail on the building. Hallelujah. The word said he fell on the apostle, but you got to understand what the apostle was, huh? They were in the building. Huh? So you and the building is connected together. There can be you without the building, and there can be a building without you, because huh? you got to work together. Huh? So the Bible said that, that, that the, 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 the Spirit came on the apostle Amen. in the building. Amen. That's why when you come to church, you can't just come to play around. Amen. After this, come on, after this, yeah. can't be no more playing around. Huh? I, after this, I, after this, I'm telling you, after this, you, you can't just come to church just to be coming to church. I, I, after this, after this, you, you, you got to go up after this. So, so chapter 2 and 3 breaks down the message to the seven church. And this morning you need to find where you at in one of those churches, my God. I, I don't have time to break it all down, but, but, but Jesus said, John, I want to tell you these things. Lord. And John said, yes, Lord. Mm. So, so John is speaking yeah. and not the preacher. John said, this is what Jesus said to you today. To the seven churches. To the church in Ephesus. He calls it the loveless church. Because you have left your first love. You allow Corona to put so much fear in you. But you used to drink Corona. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Hallelujah. You used to drink Corona. Now you allow Corona to put so much fear in you. Hallelujah. But, but I'm going to move on. So the church is spinning. He calls it the persecuted church. Hallelujah. Because the devil 
is about to throw some of you in prison. The devil is about to take some of your money. The devil is about to attack some of your children. COVID-19 is surrounded you, huh? So that you may be tested, huh? It's only but a test, huh? Just stay in the word, huh? It's only but a test, huh? To the church in Pergamum, he calls it the compromising church, hallelujah. Woo! Compromising church, hallelujah. Because you say, I don't have time to pray. You didn't, don't fast, you don't worship, and you have a lot of idolatry, pagan, to take over. Christmas trees, bunny egg shop hopping. You have a lot of paganism to take over. And I can remember all our sermon our pastors have been telling us to, to open our eyes and see what's going on in America. America is a great country because he had done so much for me. I don't have anything against America. But open your eyes and see. But he said, repent or I will come against you. Hallelujah. I don't care who you is. Repent. God will come against you. To the church in Tyre, he calls it the corrupted church. Hallelujah. Because you have allowed that spirit of Jezebel to overtake you. And I gave you time to repent, and you did not. He said, I will cast you into a sick bed unless you repent. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you what John says. I'm just telling you what John said, Jesus said. To the church in Sardis, he calls it the dead church. Woo. Because you have, you have not found. Because I have not found your works perfect before God. You dead. Wake up. God said repent. And I will give you a second chance. Woo. I will give you a second chance. And nothing like a second chance from God. To the church in Philadelphia, he calls it the faithful church. Woo. Come on, Baptist Union. The faithful church. Because you have some strength and you have kept my word. Hallelujah. And have not denied my name. Even when the building was closed, you were still having church. Even when the building was closed, you were still preaching a sermon. Hallelujah. You could preach it and you were still preaching it. Our pastor, hallelujah, was still coming and recording a sermon or preaching a sermon and sending it to the people. We were still doing Bible study. No matter if it's online or on the phone, you were still and the Bible calls you a faithful church. So he said, I have set an open door. Woo. I have set an open door. Woo. I'm saying it again. I have set an open door. And because I opened the door, nobody can shut it. That's a shot right there. That's a shot right there. Nobody can close the door that God has opened. To the church in Lady Osea, he calls it the lukewarm church. Because you are lukewarm. Neither cold or hot. And not only that, you're in one day, you're out the next. The only time you praise is when your corona check came. Thanks. You talk bad about everybody. You talk bad about your pastor. You talk bad about your deacons. You talk bad about your trustees. You even talk bad about yourself. Because when you talk bad about your church, you talk bad about yourself. The Lord said, I will vomit you. I will spit you out. So my question to you today is, which church are you? Where do you find yourself? And that's in the book, but where do you find yourself? Where do you find yourself? The Bible said the steps of a good man. The step of a good woman are ordered in the Lord. So if your steps are ordered in the Lord, you ought to take some good step. You ought to take some step up. And it's time to take some step up. 
It's time to go up. Hallelujah. Shout, it's time to go up. So what I want to say to you today, don't be a loveless church. You will be persecuted. But when persecution comes, don't be the compromising church. Don't be the corrupt church. Don't be a dead church. Hallelujah. Be faithful. And don't be a lukewarm church. You miss what I just said. You miss it. Don't be a loveless church. You will be persecuted. But when persecution comes, don't be a compromising church. Don't be a corrupted church. Don't be a dead church. Don't be none of those. But be. Be. Hey. Be. Be a faithful church. Baptist Union, be a faithful church. Because the faithful church got a door. God just opened. Hallelujah. God just opened. God just opened the door. Then nobody shut it. So be. Hey, glory to God. Be a faithful church. Be a faithful church. Hallelujah. Two points. I'm almost done. I don't know how long I've been. But I, I, I'm almost done. I, I just got to give it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you. The way the Lord gave it to me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I'm in the book. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. So two things I want to make. Two points and I'm done. Ah, I'm done. I'm done. Hallelujah. Um, we remember Jesus is, is talking to the to the seven churches, and after that, Jesus is telling Paul, I mean John, you got to come up. Huh? But I want you to get them prepared, Pastor. I want you to get them prepared. The four hundred years is over. I want you. To get them prepared. Because if they're not prepared, the enemy will just. Woo. But you, woo, glory to God, gotta get prepared. Be know that you are standing on solid ground. Two things. The first thing he said, if you go back and you read it, he said, I know your works. That's what it said to all the seven churches. I know your works. The second thing he said, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I'm going to say it again. The first thing he said to all the seven churches, I know your works. The second thing he said is, he who has ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Okay, I got the second one. Got it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of the Lord. Got it. Got to have ear. But, but the second one, Pastor, kind of like threw me off a little bit. Because he said, I know your works. So I'm like, okay, John, wait a minute. I thought I didn't have to do anything. Why God don't look at my works? He said, your works. Because Ephesians 2 said that it's not by works that we save. Mm -hmm. It's by grace mm -hmm. through faith. I'm paraphrasing. Yep. So, so that's what he says. So when John said, Jesus said, I know your works. So I was like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. so, so, so I sent a text to John. But Corona was, so the check, I mean, the, the text got delayed, but, but you know, delayed is never a denial. Mm -hmm. That's what my wife always said. Delayed is never a denial. Right. So, 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 but, Last night, as I was meditating, I got a response back from John. How? I don't know. But the Holy Ghost stepped in. Right. And it said, Brother Preacher, look up the word work. What? Word work. Okay. So, so when I went and I look up the word work, now I got to read this to you. This is, it, it just blew my mind. And this is what I found out. The word works. I mean, there was a lot of words, but there's one of them I found, and it blew my mind. Watch this. The word work, okay, 
some of the translation means is Adova. A V O D A H. Avoda. So, so even though the Hebrew people were some stiff necked people, disobedient was doing everything wrong. But they just had an understanding of their faith. They just believed in God. Even though they would be no disobedient, but they just knew their faith. So the word adova is translated to express work, yes, meaning to operate, to function, or doing something. It also means worship, and it also means service. Three in one. God, Jesus, Holy Ghost. 34, 64, 104, huh? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three for one. So the same word they use for working in the field mm -hmm. is the same word they use for, for worshiping Jesus. The, the same word they use for working in the field and worshiping Jesus is the same word they use for service. You, you, you miss what I'm saying? The, the same word, three in one. Okay, did this remind me of what my grandmama used to tell me back in the days when they used to pick up cotton? Hallelujah, some of y'all can relate. Mm -hmm. While you're in the field, mm. you're love working, love love. you worship, and you serve. <laughs> you work, you serve, and you worship. During this pandemic, some of y'all ain't praying. Read your Bible, fasting, nothing. <laughs> But some of us, hallelujah, has been fasting, praying, calling on the name of the Lord. So what John is saying is Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, I know you're over. Hallelujah. I know you work. I know your worship and your service. Why? Because working for God is good. Worshiping God is good. And servicing God it's good after you've been in the work, after you've been working in the field, after this, you got to worship. After you've been worshiping, you got to serve. After this, it's time to go up. You got to go to a higher level because Jesus said, I know your works. I know you've been worshiping. I know you've been working. And I know you've been serving. Woo! Hallelujah! I know you're a dover. I know you're a dover. Hallelujah. And you say, well, preacher, prove it. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm reminded of a king, Hezekiah. And 2 King, chapter 20. The Bible say, Hezekiah became so sick. And he was about to die. The prophet Isaiah went to see him and he said, Hezekiah, you are about to die. Get your out, get your house in order. Because the Lord said, You are about to die. Get your will together so your family won't have to fight. But the Bible said, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. Not any type of wall, but the wall that was facing the temple. And he began to pray. And he said, Lord, remember me. Remember that I have sincerely work, worship, and serve you with all my heart. I have done what you said is good in your sight. So if anybody can heal, if anybody can deliver, if anybody can break the chain, break the cycle, then the, then the Bible said, has a kind of pride. He cried so loud that his cry reached up to God. And before the prophet made it out to the temple, God tapped on his shoulder, turned around. God is turning his face to all his people today. He said, prophet, turn around. And he said, go tell Hezekiah, I have heard his cry. I have heard his cry because he's been working. Hezekiah was one of the good kings. He was 
was one of the good kings. And the Bible said that the Bible said Hezekiah was one of the good kings. And God said, I've seen your tears. Your worship works for me. Your work works for me. And you serve me the best way you can. And he said, so I will. I will. Hey, I will heal him. And not only that, I'm about to do more than he ever expected. I'm about to give him more than he ever expected. And you say, what you talking about, preacher? Because he gave him, he gave him 15, he gave him 15 more years. So I'm decreeing to declare today that God has just added something to your life. That God has just given you 15 more years. That God has just given you 15 more days. That God has just given you 15 more months. God! But after this, you got to go on. You missed it. You got to go up. And John said, glory to God. After God had showed me all these things, after he told me that what I've been doing was not in vain, after he told me, oh, mothers, the birth pain wasn't in vain. After you told me what I've been doing was not in vain. Now, there's some more things that's about to happen. There's some more troubles that's going to come. I know I'm in charge. I know I got the whole world in my head. But there's some more things coming. And the only way you're going to see it the only way you're going to understand it, the only way you will not come knock on your door, you, you, you got to come up to me. And finally realize that, that, that John never came out of the spirit from the first chapter. Amen. Lord. God just caught him to a higher level. And John said, behold, a door standing that door always been standing. That door always been open. And he said, I saw that door and that no signify. Ooh. Hear me. I'm about to walk in some new blessings. Ooh. You're about to walk into some new power. You're about to have the power that Paul had when the shadow walked my past. People were being healed. All you got to do is lay your hands and the sick is about to recover. New power. New blessing. I'm trying to quit, but, but the Lord is just, he said, keep going, just, 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 just do it. Oh, Lord, I, 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 I thank you. John said, the first voice I heard, like the trumpet, is the same voice in chapter 4. The same voice I heard is the same voice. It is the voice of power. It is the voice of a true sound. And that voice is talking to us today, saying, come up to this realm. Because after Corona, you will, not, you will know that you are not fighting against flesh and blood. As I said earlier, more is coming. When you come up in the spirit, you can clearly see the attack that's about to happen. When you come up in the spirit, you can see the enemy's plot over your children. You can see the enemy's plot over your marriage. You can see the enemy's plot over your ministry. You can see the enemy's plot over your health. Right. Right, like my pastor was saying, I think I'm through. But let me share with you Ooh. what happened to me 
when I went up in the spirit. Hallelujah. You, you can call me crazy. You can call me cuckoo. But this is what happened to me when I become, when I went up in the spirit. He that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. Uh, I told the church sometime last year, and I don't remember exactly, but I told the church sometime last year that the Lord gave me a vision of a storm coming. And I saw churches being picked up and being carried away. After this, there's some churches that's going to be closed. Hallelujah. I don't claim to be a prophet. Not then and not now. But I find out Jesus need a vessel. God just need a vessel to pour out his spirit. Because the apostle Paul quote the prophet Joel said, and the last days. In the last days, huh? you ought to know that you are in the last days. Huh? And in the last day, God's going to pour out his spirit huh? on all flesh. Huh? And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Huh? Your young man's going to have visions. Huh? And your old man's going to have dreams. Huh? Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall have vision. And your old man is going to have dreams. There's another storm coming. Stronger than this one. Not the regular storm you used to. And I, and I thought it was just water. Whew. Last year the Lord gave me a vision about the battle with the youth. And I shared it right here in the church. And that battle is coming through TikTok, IG, and all those apps. Through legislation, mm. youth, be careful Amen. on what you do and the type of apps you play with. Hallelujah. Amen. Be careful. This battle is coming. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the last I, whew, Thank you. And, and I saw a wall. We were surrounded. With a, with a wall. And there was a portal open. And every time the portal opened, there was people coming down. And every time that happened, who glory to God, the devil would be shooting bombs to come into the camp. Glory to God. But every time, hallelujah, the angels would stand up with wings. Huh? And it would take down every bomb. You are protected. But you got to stay. <laughs> no. You got to be in a faithful church. You got to be inside the wall. And when I picked outside the wall, because I had the voice say, look outside. And I looked through the cracks of the wall. All I could saw was belly bags. Trucks was pulling up with bags and bags and bags of, of body bags. And I saw houses this time being carried away. I'm just telling you what the Spirit has shown me. I'm not better than nobody. But the only way you're going to be able to see it, the only way you're going to understand it, you're going to have to go up. Because the Lord is calling some warriors today. The Lord is calling some prayer intercessors. Hallelujah. The Lord is calling some pastors, some preachers, some evangelists, some, some teachers who is not going to worry just about the title. But the Lord said, I need you to come up. I need some Moses who's going to stand on top of the mountain with the hand lifted high. I need some Joshua that's going to be in the valley fighting for me. I need some Nehemiahs that when Timbalot come, try to tear down, that's going to tear Timbalot the spirit of destruction. I'm too busy 
to be bothered. I need a few mothers, hallelujah. And on this Mother's Day, I need a few mothers to know that God is calling you to be like Deborah, to be like Noah, uh, to be like Hannah, to be like Ruth, to be like Naomi, hallelujah. God is calling some mothers. God is calling some fathers to be prophets, to be evangelists, teachers, apostles. God is calling us and it's time to go up. Because Isaiah 54 and 17 said, no weapon form against me will be able to prosper. And every time that rise against me in judgment, I, you, should be able to condemn. Because this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. And the righteousness is from me. Do me a favor. Lay your hands on yourself and say, Self, it's time to go up. You've been in this place for too long. Now it's time. It's time to go up. While John was cast away on an island to die, that's where Jesus decided to show him some stuff. And not just any kind of stuff. Things that must take place. In the midst of coronavirus, while everybody is scared, fear, this is the place God wants to speak to the church. God wants to speak to you and your family. Pastor, it's not by mistake that you have declared this year was family. It's not by mistake. You're about to cross into a new dimension. The enemy don't care about you. Ask Job. The enemy don't care. And the Bible says, when John looked, behold, Jesus showed him what's about to happen. And I don't want to get into what's about to happen. But you need to go up. It's time to go up. You've been in this place for too long. After this, God is getting ready to release some power. God is getting ready to release his glory. Do you want to be the church to be part of this glory? Amen. Do you want to be the faithful church? Amen. Do you want to be the faithful person Amen. that God can use Amen. for his glory? Yeah. It's not about us. It's not about a title. No. It's not about where you're at. No. Even though a title is good, don't get me wrong. But God is looking for some vessels. God is looking for some people that's going to be like the prophet. Who can I send? Send me. I am available. Baptist Union, it's time to go up. Thank you. And I bless God. Hallelujah. I just want to pray right quick. I just want to pray. God, I thank you. If wherever you are right now, just, just stand up. Wherever you're in your bedroom, living room, wherever you at. Just, just, just try to stand up. If you can, that's fine. But God is laying his hand on you right now. You are being healed right now. The shackles are being broken right now. The mind is being renewed right now. God is sending strength into your body right now. Receive the strength of the Lord. The strength of the Lord make us rich. Just receive the strength of the Lord right now. Father God, we thank you 
Father God, we bless your name right now. Father God, we give you the glory and all the honor, God. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to deliver this message the same way you gave it to me, God. With no fear and no hesitation, God. Let something that I say, God, let something that you say through me, God, able to reach somebody, God. Let them look past me, God. Let them hear it was the word of the Lord. It's not about who's standing behind this pulpit, God, but it's about the person that's standing inside the person, God. And we're able to proclaim the word of God. God, we are waiting for this new power. We are available for this new glory. Oh, God, release it in this church today, God. Release it into this people, God. So when we come back, God, Oh, it'd be like a, a house like never before, God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be the, the, the temple of Solomon. We won't even have time to minister because the glory is going to fall so hard hey, that we can't minister. But we're just going to bathe in the glory. Lord, I thank you for our pastor, God. Continue to strengthen him and his family, God. Continue to push him to that place, God, that you have called him to be pushed. Because, Father God, you have told me and you have gave me this vision about our pastor. Lord. And it's time to go up, God. Amen. So we thank you. Thank you Lord. We pray for everybody that is listening right now, God. We pray for everybody, for every mother's God on this weekend. We pray for everybody, God, that's been affected by this virus, God. It's not by mistake, God, but we know that you are still a healer. We know that you are still able to deliver, God. We pray for those that have lost somebody because of this virus, God. Give them understanding, God, that passes all understanding. Give them the peace that the word can give, but your peace. God, we pray for every essential worker today, God. Every doctor, every nurse, every um, janitor, God, everybody that is being essential, God. We pray for them today, God. Some people in our church, God, that is working, God, that are being essential, God, cover them in the name of Jesus, God. Do not allow their foot to hit a stone, God, because you say a thousand is going to fall at the left, 10,000 at the right, but it's not going to come near your dwelling. So we thank you today. We bless you and we give you all the honor and all the glory. God, if anything that was left out, you're still able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever think. But it is according to the power that you have released in us. So we thank you. We bless you. We thank everybody for watching. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.